So I've talked about how I use VS Code for most of my programming work. So I thought it'd be fun to talk about some of the settings I've got and some of the extensions that I run on a daily basis. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs by some point in the near future, so any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the channel. So, as I mentioned, I use a VS Code for programming, but that might change in the near future. I ran across a video that basically talked about turning Vim pretty much into VS Code, so I might look into doing that at some point when I've got some time and then I might talk about that in another video because it looks pretty cool and it looks like it's going to actually work pretty well for my needs. But for now, I'm going to continue using VS Code, or at least I'm using VS Codium. So VS Codium is a basically a set of build scripts that'll take the VS Code source code, which is open source, and then we'll recompile it without some of the telemetry and stuff like that that Microsoft adds to it. And also it comes with a couple of other extra things like some just defaults that are nice. I'll open up another project. This is probably a bad one to pick. Maybe we'll just pick this one. I think this will probably work. Something that has a folder structure is probably for the best. So by default, it's got this little breadcrumb menu. You can enable this within VS Code. I like it, so it's nice to have that there as a default with Codium. So some of the changes I've made are I've changed the keys bound for this menu, whatever it's called. I don't know what Microsoft actually calls it. And this, I guess this would be the command menu, and this is like your quick open menu or something. So I've got, yeah, I've got the quick open menu bound to F1 and the command menu bound to F2 just because they're easy keys to hit. I don't remember what it is by default. Doesn't really matter. So I've made some other neat changes like VS Codium sets the relative line numbers, but either way, I've got relative line numbers enabled. So I like those. I'll just zoom in a bit so it's a bit easier for you guys to see. I'll bring up my settings, just see if there's anything important in here that I should mention. Right, I've changed the font that I'm using. I'm using Source Code Pro Medium because that is a great font. I've got a couple of Windows settings in here. Those aren't too important. I should probably... If I was going to continue using this, I would start bringing over some Vim macros, but because I'm probably going to move, then I'm not going to worry about it. So yeah, here's how you do relative line numbers with VS Code. It's just editor.lineNumbers relative. I've got my Vim plugin using control keys, and I've got my Vim plugin using the system clipboard. And I think that's really the only stuff in here that's too important. There's not really much that I do to my settings. Yeah, so some of the interesting key bindings that I've got. So I've moved the find command to shift alt F because control F conflicts with the Vim plugin. So that uses a lot of control keys and that overrides some of the keys that are bound within VS Code. So I don't actually like to lose that menu because it's pretty useful, even though, yeah, you do have the option of using the Vim version of it if you want to. So you might have also noticed if you use VS Code, there's a couple of things missing from this menu over here. So it's source control. Actually, I think there used to be more stuff maybe. I don't know. Maybe there was, maybe there wasn't. Why is the debugger there? That should be gone as well. So I don't use most of the things. I don't use internal source control. So I use just an external terminal to do that because it's just easier. And I typically don't use the debugger. If I need to debug stuff, I know people are going to... Some people aren't going to like this, but I don't ever use a debugger. I always use print statements. They're easier basically 99% of the time. I've never actually run into a case where I need a debugger. I did almost need it once where I was running into an async issue, but I managed to get around it with prints. So yeah, I'll talk about debuggers more in a separate video where I'm going to talk about why I don't use them. But basically, I don't like using them because prints are easier. That's the general gist of it. So... For the plugins that I'm using, I think my mic's a little bit loud. We'll turn that down a little bit. I don't know. Maybe that's fine. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, it looks like it's clipping, but maybe it'll be fine. Anyway, not important. So I've got the Angular Snippets plugin. So basically what this will do is, if you don't know what Snippet plugins do, they're very popular within VS Code and other code editors like it. So it'll provide short commands so that you can actually write out constructs within a like a framework or a language a lot easier. So for example, let's take some random thing in here, like ng component. 
I don't think it's even going to care that this isn't an Angular project. So let's see if we can do that. Because this is a React project. So if we do ng dash, is it going to let me? Maybe not. OK, maybe I actually need to be in an Angular project. So regardless, you can see in here some of the stuff that it will let you do. So it'll let you generate things like, for example, components, for loops, random other stuff that's available within Angular. Nothing too special here. If you've ever worked with Angular, then you know what some of these constructs are. So the next one I have is actually really important. So I don't know if it still does this, but for some reason, at some point, VS Code didn't auto-close tags. So it didn't auto-close like HTML and XML tags. So you'd write one side of the tag, and then you'd have to write the other side. Why? That's pointless. Just do this. Like every sensible editor does. It might do it now, or there might be an option available within the settings. Yeah, okay. It has a built-in tag support. Okay, that, that doesn't need to be in my thing anymore. I guess it is actually automatically doing that now. So the next thing I have, which also might have been changed at some point, maybe, I don't know, doesn't say, no, okay, so this is another one. So for some reason, VS Code doesn't have auto imports. Unless it does now, it's just not saying this changelog. There was a time when I was using this program and it didn't have auto imports. And I was just like, why? What are you doing? That's just such a basic editor improvement because I don't want to have to remember the path to all my classes. I want to just write out the class name and then it can work out the path to it. That's just going to save me so much time, especially when I'm importing from like node modules and stuff, or I've got a complex hierarchy of folder structures like I typically do. It's just a pain not to be able to just auto import like that. So the next one I have is auto rename tag. Actually, okay, that might explain why I was getting some performance issues in pretty big files. But what this one does is actually really nice. So if, for example, you are doing some React work, for example, and then you swap over to Material UI. So Material UI, the way that works is you have to swap out the React component you're using with the Material component. So instead of having to like refactor stuff, you can just rewrite the tag and it will start changing the next one. So if we look at this, you can see here, you change the first tag and it starts changing the end tag. And honestly, that's just a really neat feature to have. It, once again, this might be another thing that has been brought into VS Code. I just haven't checked if it was ever actually added as a function. So if some of these basic ones have been added, then that's cool. And I guess I could remove them at some point. Let me know if they're actually there. So this next one I've only added fairly recently. So this is CSS peak. So VS Code lets you peek at basically implementations of stuff but it doesn't by default link class names in the same way. So with this, if you have a CSS class and you hover over it within your editor, then it'll show you a little peek of it and then you can jump to that class, which is just nice. So the next one is another just snippet plugin. All it does is just does the same thing, but this time for React instead of Angular. So nothing too special here. It just has a bunch of React constructs in it and GraphQL and I guess React Native as well. I haven't actually done any React Native work, but it's nice that that's there. So another thing, I, once again, I don't know if this has been actually merged with into VS Code properly, but there was a point where VS Code didn't have to-dos and fix-me's. You could just track your problems outside of your code, but having a like fix-me or a to-do directly above where you need to work is a lot of the time really, really helpful. So I like that feature of most IDs. I don't use it as much as I should. I end up just forgetting about the problem that I need to fix and then just leaving it. But when it is available, I try to use them. And the last thing is obviously the Vim plugin. So a lot of people will talk about the problems that the VS Code Vim plugin has and also some of the things that aren't necessarily problems, but are things they don't like about it. So the Vim plugin for VS Code comes with a multi-cursor. That's one thing that annoys people when it's there, if you're a, I guess, Vim purist. But for me, I want Vim to be the most pleasant experience I can have, and I find using multi-cursor far easier than working with the standard Vim way of 
editing multiple lines. But the big problem that this has that I can definitely agree is a serious problem is the way that it handles Vim macros. So it doesn't actually accept normal Vim macros. You have to convert them into this really weird format. So I'll see if I can find it on the GitHub because it is actually really weird. So instead of like, I understand not supporting Vim script, but that's like an actual Vim script file in your Vim RC. The thing that really bothers me about this is how broken the method they handle it with is. So I'll see if I can actually find it on here. Okay, here we go. So they pass in this weird array structure instead of just using a full string. I guess that it's easier to parse for the actual plugin, but it makes it really, really difficult to convert your Vim macros over because you have to then convert them to this weird format that doesn't match normal Vim script. I understand, as I said, that it's easier to parse, but I would like a proper, like actual Vim script format to work with because it just makes it so much easier to bring macros over like that. So it also supports things like Easy Motion and a couple of other neat Vim plugins that people tend to typically use. So I think that might be pretty much everything for the plugins. So I guess the last couple of things that are important that have actually changed for the way that I actually move around this program is I have modified the ways you move between different files. So I've got like moving left and right between files bound to Alt and then H and L. And then if I do shift and a uh, shift alt and L that'll move it to like the other side of it or shift alt H and that'll move it to the other side. And the other thing is, I think it is control alt L and that'll move it to a yeah separate split. So that's nice and I can move it back by doing the opposite thing. So control alt H. So I think that's pretty much a rundown of everything that is important within my VS Code configuration, my VS Code extensions. So I know there are people who run even more extensions than I do, but maybe I would if I was gonna stick with this, but once I get some time, so after my exam, which is on Friday, so I'm gonna be studying pretty much all the time up to that exam. After that, I'm going to start working on actually completely moving over to Vim, and hopefully I actually move to that permanently, and I will then talk to you guys about it when I actually do that. So. If you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you don't like VS Code and you use Vim, or maybe you use, I don't know, Sublime or Atom or whatever else you use. Maybe you just use IDEs for everything. Maybe you're one of those people who do web development in something like WebStorm. You know who you are. Yeah, just use VS Code, it's easier. If you like this video, did I say that part? Probably. If you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. Up on that corner, I'll have the playlist this video is in, so go check that out. I'm not sure which playlist it'll be in. I think probably like Linux Rising or something. Maybe something like that, or maybe Software Showcase. I don't know. Down below, I've got my Discord links and also my library links. So if you want to check out my Discord or you want to watch my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out. And also go check out my Twitter and my Mastodon so you actually get video updates because YouTube can never actually push them to anyone. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.